Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and welcome to my weekly uh, episode for May the 3rd, 2022, episode 165. So let's jump right into my current projects or things that I have finished. This first one you have seen already. This is my Doves of Hope quilt, which I have now finished quilting it. I think I showed you that last week. But it now has its binding on it, and it has a place on my bed uh, in my master bedroom. Uh, now, I had a, another quilt up there for quite a while called The Labyrinth, which you have seen in past videos. And uh, that's been on the bed now for a couple of years. It was one of my first major queen size and complicated bed quilts. So we decided we were getting a little tired of that one. So it was time to. Sub, sub it out with this one and that's what we've done well guess what <clears throat> just when you think everything is going fine uh walter's making the bed the other day and he goes look one of my seams had opened on this quilt now this quilt has a history of seams opening as you already know because when i put it on the long arm to quilt it i had two seams open up as well um i made this quilt several years ago when i first got really into quilting and i wasn't that careful on making sure that my fabric was staying you know in place when i was putting two pieces of fabric together that they were staying together <laughs> underneath the needle um lesson learned okay i'm very careful about that now but at the time i should have been a little bit more careful i'm an idiot and um so i had a couple of seams open up small ones uh, when it was on the long arm, I fixed those and this other one now opened up on the bed. I'm glad Walter's eagle eyes found it because it is now fixed as well. And this time, you know that I hate hand sewing and I'm not good at it at all. Um, I decided for this one that I wasn't taking the quilt off the bed and trying to manipulate it uh, to sew that seam. I left it on the bed and I used a circular needle and that worked out pretty good. I mean, my sewing still sucks, but at least that was a little easier to do than with a straight needle. So I got that fixed up and <clears throat> a little frog in my throat here. Um, but anyways, it looks good on the bed and I'm pleased with it. Actually, I have something I've been working on this week, though I am not pleased with at all. And I'm going to come to that in a bit. The other quilt that I finished, you saw this before. It is now the wonky block quilt is what I call it. And if you saw last week's episode, you know why I call it the wonky block because it is, uh, but I have the binding on it. And you know, it's at least colorful. Um, and I've had a few of you comment on how much you like this quilt. Um, <clears throat> you know, I wish uh, it didn't cost so much to ship things out in the mail to people in, in other places, uh, like a quilt, because it costs an arm and a leg to send out a quilt. Because, you know, I'd be almost tempted to say, okay, you like this quilt? I'll have a draw and you can have it. Um, but yeah, shipping stuff from Canada anymore is just, you know, you could deliver it faster if you walked to the destination and it would be cheaper. But anyways, so yeah, thank you to those of you that have made nice comments about this, but really it does not deserve nice comments. It is what it is. It's a wonky quilt. Okay. So that's what I've been up to. And uh, I have some other projects coming up, and I'm going to talk about uh, one of those in particular in a while. But let's talk about what I've bought this week. So I got myself some backing fabric. Oops, there's the back of that quilt, by the way, if you're interested. That's what it looks like. Uh, this is the one that I, you know, did sort of computerized custom quilting. That's what I'm going to call it. And I put a different pattern in each block. The back's kind of interesting. Okay. So speaking of backings, um, my order came in, my pre-order from Tracy at Whirls and Swirls. She puts uh, these packages called Fit for a Queen, uh, queen size uh, pieces of backing fabric. They're 110 inches wide and you get three meters of them. And she puts them on as a pre-order for a really good price. So I stocked up and the next time she has a sale, I'm gonna stock up again. Because actually, I really do like this brand of fabric, and she's always getting more and more uh, colors and designs uh, each time she puts in a pre-order. Um, so 
Now, 110 inch wide backing, that's pretty good. Uh, I pay at Ultimate Sewing for the equivalent uh, about $24 a meter, which is actually an excellent price as well. Um, but I have found that lately there hasn't been a real selection of um, choices, uh, although she's getting more in all the time too so i'll keep checking what ultimate sewing as well because that's a good price but at that price it's about 75 dollars for what you see here for one bundle that's here i got these for i think it came out to 60 some dollars 62 63 i can't remember exactly it was about 15 percent off the regular price which i think usually it's around 75 dollars um so i stocked up and as I said, I really like this brand. I, I, the cotton feels really nice. Uh, so, yeah, I'll get some more of those later. In the little jars below are some bobbins for my Lucy. And um, I usually buy all that kind of stuff at uh, Tracy's, at Whirls and Swirls. Uh, but we were up at Kawartha Quilting again. And you know now that I have this real love for Kawartha Quilting. And uh, they have a real good selection of various colors of Glide uh, bobbins, which is the same brand that I buy from Tracy. Only Tracy only keeps pretty much the fundamental colors. And I wanted to get a few, um, you know, different shades in some of those colors. So I got these. Um, you know, really, you don't need a lot of different colored bobbins when you're long arming because whatever you have will probably work okay. Uh, but I thought I'd get these while I was up there, and I did. Um, the other thing, though, that I got was this kit uh, with glowing hearts. Now, this is the kit, or this is the pattern. Let's move it over so you can see it. I'm talking about this one down here in the corner. You've seen this before, not the whole quilt, but you've seen this one with the, the panel. I did a quilt with that, and that one was a little bit of a challenge, if you remember. Um, and I was really interested in this sampler style one as well. And apparently this is not all piece to pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't know why I'm getting congested here. Um, some of it you cut from a panel, which is in the kit, kit, but some of it is pieced. Anyways, I bought the kit. I bought the kit because, well, this fabric is hard to get right now. Nobody seems to have it in stock. Northcott, for whatever reason, is just not shipping it out. I know that Ultimate Sewing has this on order, the fabrics you need for this. They had some of it in. I bought some there. I bought, for that other quilt, I bought fabric all over the place, trying to get enough of it to, to create the quilt. Um, so that's why I didn't bother buying this pattern and doing that, because I figured I'm going to have to be piecemealing the fabric if I can get it at all. When then I saw this kit, and it has all the right fabrics in it. So I thought, okay, for $159, I'm buying it. Um, and I have. And when I opened up the package, I saw that they had labeled Quirtha Quilting. They cut up. They made this kit up. They labeled all of the fabric to correspond with the pattern itself. Now, you might think, well, yeah, isn't that what they usually do? No, they don't. You'll get a kit and you'll have all the fabric pieces um there uh rough cut but you have to sort it out yourself with the pattern now that's not that difficult to do as long as the fabrics don't all look the same when you're looking at your picture in a pattern depending on how that pattern was reproduced and printed you don't necessarily are, are able to really to see the different fabrics clearly and you can get yourself mixed up so when I opened up this package and saw all the fabric was labeled, I went, wow, that's above and beyond in their customer service, really. Because I don't think I've ever had a kit where that has happened. Um, that's not to say there aren't ones out there that are done, but that's extra work for the staff when they're cutting up the stuff to label it. And I really appreciate it. Um, just another reason why uh, Kawartha Quilting's customer service really is excellent just excellent so anyways i'm anxious to get started on this one <laughs> i've got a lot of projects i'm anxious to get started on i have a feeling this is the one i'm going to next um 
So other things that I bought, I was up at Quartha Quilting, not just to get that kit. In fact, that was an impulse buy. Um, but of course, I was up there to get not these two blocks. I I ordered these ones from AccuQuilt directly in the United States. And you know how Walter found this company here uh, in our area that will basically give you a mailing address for the United States, for Niagara Falls, New York. And because a lot of these companies have free American shipping, not Canadian, you send them that address. It goes to, to there. This company goes down, picks it up, brings it across the, for a charge. Actually, it's very reasonable. I don't know, 20 bucks or something uh, for that. And uh, of course, it goes through customs and everything. They look after all of that and you pay for that as well. Um, and uh, you get it. And it, it's a little bit faster too, uh, we think. Because uh, once it hits Canada Mail, well, they have to sit around and look at it for a few days, you know, before they decide what they're going to do with it. Um, so anyways, that's how these came to be. And also because they were on sale for about 40% off at AccuQuilt site. I mean, you have to work it out. You have to work out how much you're paying, the exchange rate if you're Canadian, uh, shipping and all that stuff and see if it's worth your while to... Um, enlist this service sometimes it's not but I saved about walter worked it out i saved about 50 bucks on uh these two blocks so that's okay and i got the nine inch and the four inch block so i have all the cubes now uh for accuquilt so what's next well there are add-ons and i have to investigate those to see you know do i want to invest in some of those down the road or or not i probably will anyways I didn't pick these up at Kawartha Quilting. What I went up to Kawartha Quilting for was for some storage boxes, which are made by AccuQuilt, for some of my loose dies. And they are the same, very high quality. I'm very impressed with the storage system uh, for these things. Uh, they look exactly like these boxes, except I got them a couple of different sizes. And in, you pull out those inserts and they're divided inside just as these ones are and you can label them put your dies in there and it's all neat and handy so that's what i did there as well um so what else uh let's see oops not that okay i already showed you the quilt kit uh that i bought as well so yeah that's about all that i have uh, acquired uh in the last week um and i do have a few other things on order and when those come in i will show you what those are so a couple of announcements while i'm here about what's coming up craft and chat this wednesday may the 4th 2022 starting at 1 p.m eastern standard time it is the first wednesday of the month so of course it's craft and chat and if you're available and wish to i hope you can join us uh you don't have to stay for the whole three hours usually that's what works out too we run from about 1 p.m to 4 p.m eastern standard time and we just have a very relaxing time working on whatever we want to work on and it can be sewing crocheting knitting paper crafting art journaling scrapbooking uh, organizing your underwear drawer and that joke is getting old because i've said it now about four times uh in the last little while so anyways yeah all are welcome those of you on my mailing list have already got the link for the rest of you you're more than welcome to show up uh the link is in the show notes below so check it out and it's a double whammy week i'm having a pop-up sewing craft day this coming saturday may the 7th 2022 starting at 8 a.m eastern standard time now don't worry if that's a little early for you especially on the west coast um or a little late for you but my friends in england and beyond australia it's the next day um you don't have to show up at right at that time you, it's whenever you want to show up and the same with you can come and go as you please as well um no problem uh with that um i usually don't tell you this far in advance when i'm having a pop-up sewing day because usually i don't know in that far in advance i usually put up a notification on the friday before like 24 hours before and tell you yep i'm having one tomorrow come and join me i'm bored um well i'm going to be all on my lonesome this saturday here at the house because walter is on a four-day course 
starts today actually and uh, he'll be gone Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday he has off and then on Saturday he all day he's doing a course with Ron Collins and if you saw Stephen and Walter live this week we talked about that and we talked about it on so chatty too so um anyways I'll be all here on my little lonesome I need some company so pop up so and cra- uh so and craft day so I hope you can join us again. It's kind of like craft and chats, just longer. That's all. I'll be running it from eight in the morning till approximately four in the afternoon or until I get bored, as I tell you before, as I've told you before. And uh, yeah, feel free to to join in if you've got nothing better to do <laughs> and you want to have a little fun. Okay, so let's talk about what's next. Okay, a demo. So this is a demo. Uh, with the AccuQuilt, and it was really why I bought the AccuQuilt system in the first place. I hate cutting binding strips, and AccuQuilt has a two and a half inch strip die. It was the first die that I bought for the system, uh, and it just makes very short work of cutting binding strips. And so I did a little demo showing you my procedure for this. So you know when you take a quilt. Uh, when you're finished a quilt and you're square it up, you have cutoff pieces. You usually have uh, some batting and you have some leftover fabric, kind of like this. And usually it's long strips and they're probably very jagged in the whole bit. Now what I used to do with these was I would make binding from these and I would take my fabric and I would lay it out and I would, you know, straighten up one edge of it and uh, try to cut it fairly straight and then you know fold it lay it underneath my ruler and then cut my strips from that and I was using a very long piece of fabric so you know it became somewhat awkward to manage but you did manage however now that I have the AccuQuilt and I've got the uh, two and a half inch strip die it's really easy to make your strips your binding strips and this is what I do I don't worry about the jagged edges or anything like that. I just place it on my AccuQuilt. I try to uh, get it so that I'm inside the dark line at the end, which you can't see right now, but there is a dark line at this edge, which shows the edge of the blades. And I try to center it here, get as much fabric over top of the lines in the mat that indicate that these are the blades and that's where it's going to cut. And this particular die will cut three strips um, across. And then you just take your long piece of fabric, lay it out, and then fan fold it. Again, making sure that your folded edge up here is below the top of those lines. Keep it as straight as you possibly can. It doesn't have to be perfect. But the more of the fabric that you can get onto this die, the more strips you're going to get in one cut. And there we go. And I just fold over the extra, smooth it out, make sure there's no major wrinkles or anything like that. Take your cutting mat, put it on top, and put it through the machine. Okay, slide the cutting mat off, and just put my hand here in the middle, get rid of the excess off the edges, and look, long strips. I have three very long strips, they're two and a half inches wide, and what I'll do with these is I'll just put them in a bag where I put all these kind of strips and when I need binding for a quilt I just reach into the bag and it's already cut. It's a real time saver. So it's another th reason why I'm really loving the AccuQuilt system. So I will be doing more videos 
more Idiot Quilter Presents a demonstration type videos about the AccuQuilt system as I play more with it. Um, ultimately, I would like to make a quilt uh, just using the dies that come with each cube set. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, at least it's a great way to check out each of your cubes and, uh, you know, to get used to using the system. So stay tuned for some of those in the future. Okay, that takes me to the Subscribers Quilt of the Week. And this one was submitted by Sherry Shamal. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. I may have said her name wrong in the little video I did. Um, so Sherry, I apologize for that. And well, here's her beautiful creation. This quilts by a subscriber come from Sherry Shamal. Hope I'm saying your last name right, Sherry. And if I'm not, I apologize. And she writes, you ask for people to share some pics of the things they are making. I'm truly shy about sharing. I'm self-taught and I have so much to learn, but I wanted to encourage your channel and express my appreciation, so I will send you a few pics. I love, love, love to quilt. It truly is therapy to me and an expression of my soul. I'm sure you get that. This is a quilt I made from a pattern I got from a monthly subscription box, Fat Quarter Shop. It's super easy and lots of fun. And it looks really cool too as well. Um, I really like that and I see that you have it hanging up on a wall which I don't know if this is what you usually display your quilts on but great idea I see how you've done that at the top and her other submission we'll just go to the picture she says a mini quilt that I quilted on my domestic machine patterns from the book mini masterpieces by Alice Blythe it's an amazing book and I highly recommend it and let's just take a look and you say you're a beginner and you quilted this on your domestic machine. That is not beginner quilting. That is very, very advanced. I dare say that I wish I could do that on my domestic machine. Um, now you call it a mini quilt, but it looks to me like a, uh, a throw or a, a lap uh, quilt. But either way, it is really unusual and very, very lovely. And I can't get over this quilting it is so nice your feathers especially are astounding so sherry you may consider yourself uh, a new quilter and you have much to learn but i would say you're a little bit more than just a beginner thank you so much for sharing your lovely quilts with me and i'm running low again on things to show so if you'd like some of your creations featured here on the on idiot quilter episode please send them to the email address that you'll find in the show notes and i'll be more than happy to feature your creations please though just i know you get excited about me showing these but two pictures at the max for one project okay um and please if you if you want to send me multiple projects that is fine but send them as separate emails it's just easier for me to keep everything organized and write a little brief very brief three four five sentences at the most blurb about your creation okay what you think we should know okay so that takes us to the youtube channel of the week stumbled upon this one by accident uh it's a gentleman he is an American, but I think he lives in Paris now, or somewhere in France. Anyways, I think it's Paris. And uh, his he goes by the name of Franklin Habit. That's the name of his YouTube channel. He is a knitter and a sewist and a quilter. And what I really like about his uh, YouTube channel is he takes you around to some of the shops in Paris and outside Paris uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, it's just a whole different perspective of the fabric world as well. So here's my review of Franklin Habit. This week's YouTube channel is called Franklin Habit and that is the name of the man who put this up and he is a knitter and a quilter and a sewist and I stumbled upon his YouTube channel by accident and I'm certainly glad that I did because this is more than just a series of tutorials. This man takes you through various unique fabric stores in both the United States and in Paris, where I believe he now lives. Uh, 
this very interesting series of videos. And if we just take a look at some of his videos that he has here, you can see by, by way of their titles, he has needlework. He has uh, a flower market in Paris. He has um, knitting. He has um, quilting in here somewhere um, and needlework. He has a, a wide variety. He does it all, really. And he's quite a interesting character as well that keeps you entertained. If we take a look at his playlists, you can see how he organizes his videos. And we'll just go down here. He has a book club, uh, miscellany, finished project parade, shorts, fancy pants, knitting stitches, vlogs, temple of floral knit along, goofing around, um a cardigan one he has quite a bit here for everyone so if you're a knitter or if you are a quilter or if you're a sewist then i think there's something here for everyone so i really highly recommend checking out franklin habit interesting name so on my vision board, well, it's not really on my vision board, but it's part of my vision of projects for the future I want to do. And that is, as I've already mentioned to you, about making quilts using the cube system and AccuQuilt. Well, when I bought uh, these cubes from the States, they when they were having a special, they threw in an Eleanor Burns book on using AccuQuilt ad that has patterns for various quilts uh, in that. So I thought I'd show you this book because it's very, very interesting. And if you have the AccuQuilt system, you might want to uh, purchase this, this book. week. The pattern that's on my vision board that I want to do someday is not a pattern, but a book of patterns. And it's called Quilt in a Day, Go Cube, Mix and Batch Blocks and Quilts. Six, eight, nine, and 12 inch blocks using AccuQuilt Go Cutters. And it's by Eleanor Burns, who's a goddess in the quilting community. Now, Right off the bat, I want to tell you, this book has been designed to sell the various cube blocks for the AccuQuilt system. And that's okay, because I own all of them now. And I'm very much into the AccuQuilt die cutting system. So when I got my hands on this book, I thought it would be a great way to, you know, really get in and use my AccuQuilt dies to their fullest. Uh, this is available on Amazon for about $38 Canadian, Amazon.ca. And I'll just show you some other pictures of the things that they show that you can make using the cubes and these instructions. And there's some really quite nice uh, patterns. And they're all fairly well explained, um, supposedly written by Eleanor Burns. Yeah, maybe, maybe she's got people. Well, I know she has people, but there's lots of interest, interesting information as well in this book, as well as the patterns. So if you're into AccuQuilt cutting, then I would really suggest this might be something that's worth investing in. So one of my plans down the road is to actually make an entire quilt using nothing but the AccuQuilt system as far as cutting is concerned. We'll see how that works out. And that takes me to something of my own that I wish to cri uh, critique today. This is a very, very recent project. Let me throw it up here. There it is. This is called the Easy Bargello by Jordan, uh, Donna Jordan at Jordan Fabrics. I saw this last week. She did a tutorial about it. And uh, I love the fabric that she used. And I put it in on my vision board as, a, you know, a potential for the future. Well, when we went up to Quilt, uh, worth of quilting the other day right in front right in by the front door was a whole display of their latest fabrics and this fabric was in this it's by Northcott I think it's called Turtle Beach or Turtle Bay something like that uh, it's sort of a an oceany theme to it and so I bought two meters of this fabric because I was going to make this little wall hanging that Donna Jordan had made yeah Okay, now when you this is not I haven't bound this yet, and I don't know if I'm going to uh, bind it, but I'll speak to that issue in a second. I'm not happy with this. 
nothing to do with the pattern. It has everything to do with me being an idiot. Okay, I have done Bargellos before, although I'm starting to think I'm a little Bargello challenged. The reason I say that is the last Bargello I made was a semi-Bargello. I got things mixed up, and so half of the quilt is a true Bargello. The other half is, well, an interesting pattern, and the overall quilt is kind of interesting, but it's not a true Bargello. This one, if you've ever made a Bargello before, they're not difficult, he says, <laughs> knowingly. Yeah. Um, they're just, they can get a little confusing because you make these long tube strips or strip tubes, and then you have to, you know, take out some of your sewing to make the tube a certain length and in a certain pattern. It gives you this effect, um, this wavy effect. Well, this one, you didn't have to do that. It was really simple. You cut these strips in certain widths, and then you uh, cut off so much on the bottom of one strip, put that attached to the top of the strip, and carry on, and you get the effect you're seeing here, or sort of. Well, okay. So I got the fabric, and I thought this would be a great chance to use my different strip cutters on the AccuQuilt. Um, and I pretty much had one for every size that was here, except for three inch and one and a half inch, which are now on my list of dies to buy. And uh, so I merrily went along my way and cut them. Well, the first set of strips I cut, um, I cut wrong. They're supposed to be with the fabric. Um, I ended up getting things turned around on my block. And uh, so I cut, instead of one long strip, it came out like into four pieces for each strip, which I could have fixed by sewing them. But, and I was going to do that. And then I just, when I started doing that, I realized, oh, this is a gradient type of fabric or ombre, whichever you want to call it. And uh, if I did that, I would no longer have the ombre effect because of the way I cut it. So, and I'd already cut my other strips and those ones I cut correctly. So I'm looking through what's left over of the fabric. Not much, but I was able to manage to get the strips I needed for that. But it meant that I had to take narrower strips, sew a long seam down the middle of them, and then cut it to width. And so I've got a few extra seams in this quilt. Okay, so that's the first thing that went wrong. The next thing that went wrong is my sewing. Now, if you look, let's see here, um, down here on the bottom, you notice something? My strips, and it's not the picture, it's me, are getting a little wonky here. They're not straight. Okay, I before I get the comments, I know what I did wrong, and I knew I was doing it wrong, and I kept doing it wrong, uh, regardless. That's why I call myself the idiot quilter, because it was an idiot move. When you're sewing long strips, they will have a tendency to start to warp. So to avoid that, what you should do is every other strip you're sewing onto your set, you should do the opposite way. So if you were, you know, you had two of the strips on top of each other here and you sewed your long seam, then turn it around and do it the opposite way. And I don't know, I'm not explaining this right, but those of you that have done this kind of strip sewing before, you know what I'm talking about. And that is supposed to help things avoid being basically stretched and warped. Yeah, I didn't do that. I knew I should, but I didn't. I got lazy. This was supposed to be a quick project. Yeah, don't take shortcuts. That's my advice. Just do it the right way the first time. So I'm a little warped. So after I get these all together, what do I decide to do? Okay, I decide to uh, block it. So I put it onto my cutting mats and I pin the bejesus out of it. I put a straight ruler, a steel ruler across the top uh, as my straight edge and I pin it and pull it and stretch it and everything. And then I hit it with steam and I hit it with... Uh, pressing solution and I press and steam the shit out of it and I worked my way down and it was sort of working actually that did work until the bottom it's still 
a little warped. It could only go so far. But believe me, this was a heck of a lot more warped than it is now before I did that. So I decided then, all right, it didn't call for a border, but I thought I'd throw a border on it just the same because I thought it would give it a little bit more stability. Yeah, I was wrong <laughs> about that idea. So I decide now, well, what the hell, let's throw it on Lucy and let's use Quilt Path and let's do a nice little pattern on it. So you can see my pattern. Now, if you look at it from where you're seeing it right now, it looks okay. It looks like waves and that was the whole effect. And I've got waves going one way and some waves going the other way. The problem with my waves are they're different sizes. As you work your way down, let's see if I can get a little bit closer. It's not easy to see this on this fabric, but these are the size that I wanted. But as you work your way down and these go the opposite way, they get a little smaller. And then down here at the bottom, see, they're starting to compress. Yeah. Why is that? You may say, uh, because I screwed up when I laid this out on Lucy in terms of how I set up the edge to edge pantograph design. I forgot that when you in initially set it up, you put in the full size of the quilt, the length of the quilt. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> I just went ahead and set in the safe zones and uh, I left it at that. So of course the safe zone is only about 20 inches down and so it calculated the pattern for that and when i i did what they call zones and so that means like when it gets the one part filled in because it's supposed to know the full length of the quilt if you tell it it'll go to the next zone and it'll figure out how many rows you need and it'll keep everything consistent and the right size do you think i could figure out how to correct that error i tried all kinds of things and then I thought, well, I'll disguise it. I got these set up so that they were pretty close to um, the size that I had here. And I decided I'll just flip them because then, you know, it won't because they wouldn't line up exactly. I couldn't get them to line up exactly uh, with the row ahead of it. Yeah, you know that it, it did. It did work a little bit. So I was really happy with that. But the problem was I had to redo all of that. Uh, when I got to the next area and it just went from bad to worse at that point. So yeah, when you see it here, it does look all that bad. You get a binding on it, it might be okay. But I'm debating now. I'm really debating what I'm going to do about this. Um, am I going to spend the time, not that it'll take a lot of time for this, but am, do I really want to make binding for it and bind it for something I'm not happy with? Or do I just put it in a pile somewhere and forget about it all? Or do I reinvent it? I mean, it's all quilted. I could make it into a tote bag. And I'm seriously considering that. As a tote bag, it would look pretty cool. You know, and you wouldn't be able to, to figure out those mistakes. They'd be hidden in the way the bag is made. Or do I just forget the whole about the whole thing? I even thought about, well, I could cut it up into like a couple of placemats kind of a thing. Um, and that would be all right too. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. In fact, I don't know if I'm even going to make a decision about that yet today. It may just go in a corner somewhere. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Got some suggestions of what I can do with this thing? Or should I just bite the bullet, bind the sucker, and... I really don't have any place to hang it. I might find a place. Man, I can hang it out in the Lucy room. I don't know. Um, and just chalk it up as a as experience and maybe as a reminder of what not to do. That would be good. I just put it here. Here's what you shouldn't do. Maybe I could embroider a little little piece that I could hang with the quilt or something and go, remember, don't do this. Idiot. We'll see. Eh, give me your comments about that, what you think. Okay, so the Easy Bargello didn't turn out to be... So I think I cut myself off there for a minute. Like I was saying, the Easy Bargello didn't turn out to be that easy because I'm an idiot. 
Okay. I'm hitting the wrong buttons today. That's the button I really wanted. All right. So what's next on the agenda? Okay. So I have another interview that I'm putting up today. This is with the daughter of Shirley Heineman, which you saw her interview last week. And a lot of you made some really nice comments about Shirley, which are great. Just a reminder, some of you write your call comments like Shirley, you're talking to Shirley directly. And I've had a few people write comments like that, not just with Shirley's video, but some of the others. And I'm sorry, I appreciate the comments, but it looks to me the way you've written them that you want those comments to be seen by the person I interviewed. They probably won't see the comment because it's my YouTube channel, not theirs. So, you know, if you have a comment for one of these people, if they have a YouTube channel, I have put it in the show notes for that particular interview. Just go to the YouTube channel and pick one of their um, videos or, you know, go to their about section and see if they have their email address there and, you know, write your comment to them that way. That way they're going to get it. Okay. Um, because if you just put it on my YouTube channel, although other people will see it and appreciate it, and I appreciate it, um, the person it's really meant for is not going to see it. Okay. Um, so this is the daughter of Shirley. Her name is, uh, Shala Frank. And, uh, she is a very, very gifted, uh, crafter. She is not a quilter. She is a paper artist. And she's got some fantastic projects that she has done. And she has a YouTube channel as well. And um, I will have the link for that in the show notes uh, below today. And it'll also be in the uh, interview show notes as well. And um, I'm just looking in my show notes to make sure it's there. And guess what? It is not there. Anyways, I think I do refer to it in the video. Uh, crafting through the chaos of life, I believe is what it's called. I always have a hard time remembering the exact wording of her YouTube channel, but it's really worth visiting. Anyways, I've rambled on here. Here's a little bit of that interview to so tease I want to ask you though about the Dolly Parton and the Betty White journals. What, well, what are they? <laughs> I take um, little golden books mm -hmm. and I alter them to become journals that you can write in and, and different things. So it's, um, um, yeah, it's uh, one was a, a, a Betty White little golden journal book that I did. And uh, it was kind of a, a memorial journal. And what I did is I, I recently sold it and the, the entire sale proceeds of that is gonna go to an animal shelter here in, in her memory. Um, but they're just, yeah, they're fun things to that little golden books put out is these different yeah. uh, stories of their life. And then I just try to build on that with the different supplies that I have and um, just make a fun, fun journal out of it. Yeah, that is not something I've ever heard of as a, as a theme for a journal, an actual person. But that's a really great idea. Okay, so that takes us to the online fabric store of the week. And this one is called Kaleidos Kaleidoscope of Quilts. That's a bit of a mouthful. And a really interesting store. And here is my look at it. This week's online quilt store is called Kaleidoscope of Quilts. And it is located in a small town in Western Ontario called St. Mary's. And I have been to St. Mary's, but I don't remember whether or not I actually went into this particular store. So let's check it out, shall we? Here's their first page on their website. And right at the top, you can see there's free shipping over $100 in Canada and over $175 for orders to the USA. Well, over $100 in Canada, that's pretty good for shipping because most places I have found that are online stores only offer free shipping for orders of $150 to $200 uh, over. So right off the bat, I'm impressed by that. So let's just look down further on this front page. And they've got COVID updates. They've got return policy gift cards and contact right up front. So that's good. Um, those are things that I think are crucial. They have grunge. They have Valdani thread. Um, I don't, that must be for embroidery, I would think. 
um yes by the looks of the picture i would say embroidery bella solids um looks like they have some patterns uh punch needle embroidery lots of notions and now they're showing some of their featured fabrics Ooh, these ones are very pretty this daydreaming i've not seen those before look like whole cloth uh things for whole cloth quilting they have trentex fabrics okay so they have a wide variety and let's go in and check then their fabric in specifically so click on store and on the left side they have bella solids christmas and holiday crane design fabric fabric kits notions grunge patterns Valdani threads wool kits okay let's go to fabric let's see how this is organized and what their prices are okay they show you immediately when something is sold out that is good to know and okay 5.99 9.75 a panel for eleven ninety eight. That daydreaming ten ninety eight. DJ dreaming matching fabrics eight fifty. So I'm assuming that these prices at eight fifty are probably for half a meter. Let's check that out to verify it. Okay. Not really sure. Let's go down further and see if there is an explanation. I tell you what it is. Ah, there we go. So one is it's done in half meters, which is what I pretty much assume. So a meter of that would be $17. That's not bad. That's pretty good. But it looks like they have, depending on what brand or manufacturer fabric, different prices. So let's go down a little further. 850 okay something like this 599 well it's sold out but uh i am suspecting that 599 is for a half meter but for like a solid so let's just see yeah so that's still pretty good for a solid or a pattern that reads as a solid so like 11 dollars 12 dollars 12 dollars for a meter so prices seem to be fairly good now let's just take a look at how they've organized their fabrics as well so we go back here and yeah it doesn't seem they don't seem to be organized in they have them by best selling featured but as far as finding um brand it looks like you just have to sort of scroll through. Yeah, I would have liked something that uh, showed the different brands or name of the manufacturer, designer or something like that. I think that would have been better. But they do seem to have a fair selection and prices don't seem bad. Yeah, so anyways, if you like browsing, this is the place for you. Now let's take a look at fabric kits and see what they have. Oh, so they have the Glowing Hearts kit for $164.98. That's not a bad price. And they have the one that I had a lot of problems with as a kit, $92.98. Um, prices for kits do not seem unreasonable, considering that these come with the fabric. And they have quite a few to pick from. Okay, that's pretty good. Did they have pre-cuts? Let's go back into the store. Well, they do. They don't seem to have a separate category for this, though. They just show them. 10 inch, 10 inch. So again, it looks like you have to browse through your fabric line in order to find anything that's a pre-cut. Now, if we do a search for pre-cuts, does this help us?
Hmm. Uh, not really. Nope. Took me to something pre-cut batting. Totally different. Okay. So this is one of these kind of websites where you're going to have to hunt around. And if you've got time to do that and you enjoy that kind of thing, that might be all right. Let's take a look at their patterns. Okay, they seem to have a lot of applique kind of thing and needlework patterns. Uh, as far as quilt patterns are concerned, I'm not really picking up on anything. These are all kind of, and they I think because they sell wool, these are probably wool um, applique. Yeah, so as far as patterns for quilts are concerned, not really finding a lot there. Okay, check out their Valdi threads, which again, it looks to me like this site is more into applique and embroidery. And here are the threads, 650 for a roll, and I have no idea if that's a good price, average price or what, because I don't buy this kind of thread. So maybe you would know better if you're into doing uh, wool. They have wool kits. I know that wool kits are very popular. And yeah, they have quite a few here. Not really into that myself, but who knows? Maybe someday I'll get into that. Um, now, interested, grunge. What are we calling grunge? Oh, more fabric. And it's a little more expensive. $9.95, I'm assuming, at half a meter. Quite a bit of it to pick from, though. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. And crane design. I don't know what crane design is. Uh, again, it looks like uh, applique patterns. Okay, and I imagine notions are fairly standard. They probably have notions specific to doing applique and wool. Yeah, yeah, pre-cut batting and insulating material to make different projects. Okay, bobbins, some um, rulers needles yeah pretty much standard stuff and looks like pretty much standard pricing for that kind of thing i don't think there's a lot of leeway for stores anyways when it comes to selling notions in you know i think everybody's in the same ballpark for price okay so oh they do have something called bella solids as well i am not familiar with this brand of fabric it's $5.99. Okay, so it looks like it's your standard solids. And yeah, about $12 a meter works. Oh, two. Now, events. Do they have classes? Nope, not at this time because of COVID. Okay. Their con uh, contact reviews. Okay, so they've got some favorable reviews, but I wouldn't expect that they would put up unfavorable reviews. So I guess overall my feeling is that uh, if you're into wool applique, this may be a spot for you to go to. Uh, if you want some solids or fabrics that read as solids, prices are very reasonable and their prices seem reasonable on their fabrics as well. The only thing I'm really not happy with is their method of laying out uh, for you to find the fabrics uh, i don't find i i'm not really into going page after page after page after page searching for different things although they do have a search bar but you know i i have a feeling that that's limited too but if you like to browse this might be the spot for you and they do have some very nice fabrics okay so that's kaleidoscope of quilts in saint mary's ontario so that takes me to the end of this week's episode, and uh, I hope you have a great week. Just remember, Craft and Chat this coming Wednesday, Pop-Up Sew and Craft Day uh, this coming Saturday. Hope to see you there, and you have a really great week. Go out there and make something that makes you happy.
talk to you later. Bye-bye for now.